Hello. Just, hello. How are you? I'm good. Good. Or not good. That's what. That's why I did that. Okay. Cool. We have a different setup. I ke Kevin moved the camera, and I like it. It's good. All right. Yes. It's like we're looking at each other, we're looking deep into each other's eyes. That's yes. It's almost as good as being in Phoenix, but not quite. But <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. I love that episode. That was really fun. We should do that again. Yes, please. Oh, when you come to yes. um, Troutdale. Yes. We'll do the podcast from there. Yes. That, that'll work. That would be great. I have a surprise for you today whenever we start. Where's my watch? Yes, we have four minutes till we start. So I get to start. Okay. I have a surprise for you. That's, That's a little a little bit late, but I'm I'm usually the surpriser, not the surprisee. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a little uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to my world. <laughs> Payback is uh, hmm, it's, uh something, right? Is nice. Payback is nice is the word you're looking for. Oh, did you bring somebody in? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Something just went away. Yeah. Well, somebody got into the panelists and I unpaneled them. them. I unpaneled them, but then I thought, oh, maybe Kim. No, no, I have no surprises. I have. I'm not bringing anybody in today. Ah. Not and yet. We're talking about blossoming today. Yes. And yeah. and rethinking. Oh, I got to tell you, I did <laughs> things this week that I just never. Why would, why would you think that that would even be possible is what I did this week. That's like, huh? That's great. It, it, yeah. And su surprising, like it, it, it did that, that, and then I, I missed a, a button and I ran, I meant to run veins 79 and I was working in this patient's mouth. And we we're trying to dissolve scar tissue at the back of her tongue as a patient that had that chemical accident where she had, right? Yeah. And so her tongue, what was that? I don't know. I, I don't heard know. it. It was a burp. <laughs> I didn't burp. Did you burp? No, Kevin didn't burp. He's in denial. Um, and I thought I was, I looked at the the structure of the tongue and the mucosal tissue and there's arteries and veins and nerves and connective tissue so I meant to run 79 and I thought it was running 79 and this whole hole just opened up in the back of her tongue everything just melted and I looked at the frequency and it was 70 I pushed the buttons wrong it's like 70 what's what's 70 that would melt all that it's a frequency for the gums no. Yeah. Like, so when I say the frequencies do exactly what they're alleged to do, whether that's what you intend for them to do or not, that is like a thing. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. So that was, that was really fun. It's like a yeah. little fun surprise. <laughs> It was. It's like all kinds of fun surprises. And when we... That's never happened to me like that. It's happened to me the other way where I've missed a button and I'm like, why isn't this working? And then I look and it's like, oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Is it 78, exactly. not 79? And then, or, or 78, not 77 and whatever, but it's never gone the other way. way. And then this particular <laughs> patient has, she's an artist and she has an extraordinary ability to describe what it feels like when a frequency is working. Ooh. So she'll say things like, it feels more open or it feels alive or I can feel my tongue or I, something, mm -hmm. right? So I'm not a big believer in or user of the solfeggio frequencies. They're just right. like a little... <clears throat> to you know non thank you thank you because i try those like no. once in a while and i've never mm -mm. never really done anything but although there's one the repair dna two no 
285 repaired repaired tissues and organs. Okay. 285. Well, I used that in combination with the gums, the connective tissue, the tongue, which is the same frequency as the palate, uh, the pharynx, uh, and through, and with that one, it magic happened. And that's the only one I tried because what I needed to do was, you know, make her tongue be a tongue. Yeah. <laughs> and the connective tissue to be connective. Yeah. And it worked. Wow. Yeah. And then the chemical agent that she, Manette, is the repaired DNA frequency time dependent. It seems to be. Mm. It's like the people that have used it in spinal muscular atrophy, um, they have to run it for a long time. It, right. It's one of those where you just watch and see if it works. Right. And um, uh, the lady that she's in Philadelphia, I can see her face, so I can't remember her name. She did a presentation at the symposium in 17 on a child with spinal muscular atrophy, and she used the repair DNA because the DNA in those children's spinal cords is missing an enzyme. It's missing right, right. a thing. So it doesn't work. So right. yes, maybe. And then, yeah, it was, what else did we do with her? Oh, she was the one. Oh, I know the other thing, the, the chemical that she got in her mouth was really alkaline. Oh, right? Okay. Yeah. And we think of frequencies as um, neutralizing whatever was there. So there's two frequencies in the advanced that I've never used for reversing alkalinity. So I did alkalinity in the so 117 and 15 for the two channel A's. Okay. Right? And I did it with the mucosal tissue in her mouth, mm -hmm. with the connective tissue, with the gums, with right. the ligaments in her teeth with the vagus nerve and we both got it's like i'm sitting there trying to stay awake because i'm working on her and she got so stoned that she's sort of like oh this feels good oh and who like you just look down the list it's like you look at what happened to her and what are the possible pathologies right and she said how do you tell what's working and i just my had my hand on her arm and it's like, I just feel for smush. And she said, well, how do you know it's done? It's like, well, okay. You, you know how you feel less stone than you felt about a minute ago? Yeah. Well, your forearm isn't smushy anymore. So 117 is finished. Oh, okay. That's just, it was really fun. I think that's a great point that you just said, because I think a lot of practitioners think about feeling for smush in the area that they're trying to affect. And that's not always the case. Like you're not going to feel, I'm going to use a psoas because it's my favorite thing. You're not going to feel someone's psoas go smush. You're feeling the fascia and the connective tissue in the abdomen go smush, but you can also get that same effect. Like you said, on the forearm, like every it's, it's a global sort of effect. That's why when you're working on someone's ankle and their face goes like this, yeah. now they're not having a stroke. They don't have Bell's palsy. It's just smushy. Exactly. Smush. Smush. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's a good point to make. That is so cool. Yeah. It was a that part was fun. Okay. Now it's now it's the fun part. You ready? Uh -huh. You didn't forget. <laughs> uh -uh, totally not gonna forget. So do we want can we do the slides? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, it's share screen. Share screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are slides. There are slides. You can hit share at the bottom share at the bottom so do you remember this oh yes do you remember that yes you thought i forgot right <laughs> you have so much on the go <laughs> yeah well you almost got away with it um <laughs> funny this is ruth johnston she was she's a rn phd she was a patient of mine in 1998 99 she came down from seattle to get treated for various things she loved fsm and um, this is 
the slide that goes with this. The Ruth Johnston Award is given with love in memory and in honor of Ruth Lucille Johnston. Her family created this award after she passed away. Ruth was a woman of great intelligence, spirit, compassion, understanding, courage, determination, and perseverance in pursuit of alternative health care and subtle energy. She believes strongly in frequency-specific microcurrent treatments shared with many and always was intrigued with the possibilities in the field. She believed in people and touched lives of all ages. She was a nurse, an educator, a researcher in life's various aspects and always looking to the future. We miss her and believe she is continuing her work on the other side. Um, she had had breast cancer five, six years before, and um, she had a recurrence um, and she was trying to hang on until the symposium that we were holding in December. And in August, it just became too difficult. And she looked at her brother and said, um, I'm just going to have to help Dr. McMakin from the other side. Oh. So, and then she passed away two days later. So the Ruth Johnston Award is presented to the person who has done outstanding work in support of FSM and who embodies Ruth's intelligence and spirit, compassion and courage, determination and perseverance. And previous award winners, Christy Hughes, Glenn Smith, George Douglas, Jeff Bland, Denise Curtis for performing the first FSM control trial, Jeff Bland for his public support of FSM at the beginning before anybody ever heard of us, Leon Chaitel, Mary Ellen Chalmers for, for patenting the use of FSM in de dentistry, Jim Oshman, Diana Cross, and uh, this was 2019 was Ben Catholi, and in 2021, we didn't have you in person. And so this is, oh. I said our awards are badass because we have badass speakers. This is a Costa Boda vase. It is literally the last one on the planet because I bought the last three and now we have to pick a different one, but it is a crystal vase from, see that? Oh. And it's just got the logo on it, so you can use it actually as a vase. Oh. And then, yeah, you want to look at it again? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. That is it's, amazing. It's just, it's just stunning. Wow. And it weighs a ton. It looks like it does. Yeah, it's really, it's probably about 10 pounds. Jeez. Yeah, well, maybe eight. And then the plaque that goes with it, because all that has, this says, Ruth Johnston, RN, PhD, see it looks backwards, oh. is presented to Kim Pettis for her support and advocacy of frequency specific microcurrent for February 28th, 2021. Oh, see? Oh, it's not yeah. often I'm stuck for words, but wow. That is beautiful. People who are listening on the podcast, you're going to have to go back and look at this on YouTube because there are no words. Wow. That's and then, beautiful. yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Oh. You, what you did, who you are. So in 23, I already have the surprise person picked out. Good. And so I'll, um, if you'll bring these to Phoenix, I'll represent them in front of the in front of the group, and we'll do twenty one and twenty three at the same time. Because it's always it's always a surprise. Yeah, that's amazing. And you forgot. You thought I forgot. It I, was I, well. There's so much going on. You know, pandemics and clinic openings and all the patients and yeah. oh, I want to touch it. <laughs> it it will come. We will ship it tomorrow, and you'll have it probably Monday or Tuesday. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. You're right though. Your, your awards and your, even your plaques and it's just, there are, they're, but they're badass. Can we say that? Like they're, yes, they are. Well, it's like, I've lectured all sorts of places and what you get is a, is a paper thing in a tacky, if I can use that word, totally 
frame, you know, off the rack, eight by 10, or yeah. sometimes 11 by something. And, and then you have a stack of them and pretty soon your wall fills up and you go, yeah, right, whatever. So right. I like giving awards that are pieces of art. Yes. That you beautiful. like to look at, you know? Yes. yes. And they're not, the, well, I guess they're a little more expensive, but considering what the presenters do to prepare for, and then when you think of what you have, what you did starting in um, 2016 was the very first sports course. Yeah. yeah. And you showed up and you said, this is what I want to do. Here's my slides. And we're going to do it this way. And you did, you did all the work. You've created a whole new arena for FSM all on your own. Everybody else I've ever trained as instructors just put things, put more things on my list of things to do. Right. And then I trained them. And it's like you said, okay, I'm already trained. This is what I want to do. Can I do this? And I went, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. And then you did it. Yeah. And now it's become really for anybody that does physical medicine, the comprehensive core is the first part. And then after they get over the shock of that, uh, then the second step is, isn't the advanced for anybody that does physical medicine. The second step is the sports course. So we have to think of something else to call it besides sports. I agree because I think it's a, like a turnoff to some people who, cause like, well, I don't treat athletes. Well, no, you don't. If you treat humans that move, <laughs> you might find it useful. Well, you treat a guy that has foot drop. Right. He was in a medically <laughs> induced coma for five months and positioning cut off the blood supply to the anterior tibial nerve and the peroneal nerves. And so he has foot drop. Okay, so how did I treat him? Well, you treat from the knee to the foot, the low back to the foot and the neck to the foot. And first you treat hypoxia and the nerve and then increase secretions in the nerve and you treat it from the knee to the foot and the low back to the foot. And then after you've treated the nerve for about an hour and the sensation is now normal and the foot is a different color, then you turn on 81 and 10 and 81 and 84. And for those of you that don't speak FSM, that's increased secretions in the spinal cord because his brain hasn't heard from his foot in a year. And then you do increased secretions in the cerebellum because the cerebellum really has disowned this foot because the nerve is dead. So why should I talk to it? <laughs> right. So then you turn the cerebellum on. I didn't have to turn it off right. because it was already off. Yes. And then we did the sensory cortex. There's no pain involved. So I didn't have to treat the thalamus. Right. There was no fear of moving it. Right. So you turn on the sensory cortex, then you turn on the cerebellum again, then you do the spinal cord again, and then you do increased secretions and freaking everything at one time. Mm -hmm. And then the muscles in his foot started to fire. Right. So he has the, oh, and sarcolemma, mm -hmm. increased oh. secretions in 46, thanks yeah. to you. Yeah. And so at the end of it, so he has a combination of neuropathic atrophy because of the nerve damage, right. but he also has disuse atrophy. Right. He's been in an AFO brace for a year. So there's, there's stuff. So I'll see him next week and he has little exercises to do. But at the end, he was walking different. Yeah, of course. So. Yes. <laughs> what I did at school today. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, it's so funny when I come home from work, I think my family um, doesn't even want to ask me anymore. Like, so what'd you do at work? Because it's never like, oh, it was good. It was like, no, you have to sit. Yeah. And it's verbal like Bleh! for, for the next hour. Um, I'm still sort of like in shock with, with the whole Ruth Johnson. It's so beautiful. So I'm, I'm going to have to just kind of put that in a little box, compartmentalize, because we have a ton of stuff to get through today. Okay. 
Cool. So, so we're going on our blossoming theme for April. And while I'd, I'd love to talk about allergies and ear infections and histamine, which is on the list at some point, um, we have a very important ACL reconstruction that yes. I would like to kind of make this a regular little micro segment so I can kind of walk people through it. But you and I were talking um, right after post-op stuff and collaborating in the universe without actually collaborating on our phones, which is super strange right. the way that we do that. But like, I'll literally just be thinking, I have to text you and fill you in. And then you're like, so how's blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> here we are. So um, everybody listening, we have a really um, kind of fun ACL reconstruction um, that happened on Friday. So a um, little less than a week ago. And to start things off again, I want to just talk about the mode bank is a fantastic starting point, but it right. is not the gospel. It is not the recipe book. It begs for alterations. Tweaking. Tweaking was the word that we used. Yes. Oh, so the oh new, God. the new software has almost everything that you can think of. You've done such a amazing job updating almost any procedure condition is going to be on there in some shape or form, but it needs tweaking. So, and it's such a good learning, um, learning and study time, right? Like you're never done learning. You're never done studying. I don't care what profession you're ever in. Like there's always something to brush up on. You learn it when you need it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So when I'm going into a case like an ACL reconstruction, the first thing I do is open up my netters. Yeah. That's step one. Look at the knee. What's going to happen? How is this ACL going to get repaired? Because um, a anterior cruciate ligament, that's our ACL, um, the ACL attaches the femur to the tibia and for the lay people out there, it prevents the femur, your thigh bone from flying off the, the tibia, off your shin bone. That's the, the check that it makes. Forward or backward? It goes forward, from... forward. The, so it, yeah. So the, it, it's named for where it attaches on the tibial plateau. So the anterior cruciate goes from the kind of posterior side of the femur onto the anterior part of the tibia and your PCL is the opposite. So deep inside your knee, you've got two little guys that kind of crisscross and they prevent that, that shearing kind of motion. So the ACL, I didn't realize there was almost four different types of grafts that you can do to repair that if it's completely torn and this patient, it was completely torn and it snapped up high by the femur. So not a, it's actually better from what I've heard too, because the lower down closer to the tibia, you have a higher risk of the meniscus getting involved. So, okay. Always looking for the sunny side. Always. So ACL is completely torn. The four types of grafts, there's pluses and minuses. I don't want to get into all of them, but in this case, the hamstring was the semitendinosus was the graft of choice. And the surgeon is amazing because he's taking screenshots as he's going in arthroscopically and sending them to me so I can geek out in real time. Oh, love this. And they bundle it. So they take strips of it and then they bundle it and then they attach it with dissolvable screws in the femur and in the tibia. Dissolvable, yeah. dissolvable. I'm telling you. That's new. Totally. I was like, wow. Yeah. So, um, totally geeking out and seeing all these like hardware and, and things going on. And then I'm looking, I have my netters open. I have like the surgical snapshots. And then I am looking at the post-op in the mode bank and post-op knee day one is long. It's like, I don't know, three hours long, maybe two and a half hours long. It's, it's quite, it's quite lengthy. And I'm, I'm always looking to trim the fat off of everything because I have these athletes that can't sit still ever. So I'm like, where can I whittle it down? There wasn't a lot to whittle down, but 
you, I mean, you wrote that knee post-op. I'm not sure who or what the patient was in mind because it kind of has everything. So as a practitioner, when you're designing a program for a patient, again, rethinking it, okay, this is an ACL reconstruction. Step one, where did they harvest the graft? Semi-tendinosis. Okay. So tendon. So I'm literally, cause I'm a pen and paper kind of gal. I'm literally just writing down in English, not in numbers yet. What tissue types am I looking at? I'm looking at the tendon. I'm looking at connective tissue. They're drilling into the bone. So, you know, and I'm kind of going through it that way first. And just FYI, the knee post-op is written for a meniscus repair. Okay. It's not written for an ACL. Okay. Like I leave it up to practitioners. It's like, come on, you guys, uh, the spoon only goes so far. Totally. So you figure it out. So you don't have to treat the meniscus unless the meniscus is torn. Right. It is the semitendinosis. I don't have netters in front of me. Is it a flat tendon or a round tendon? It's sort of, well, it depends. So in netters, it looks like a round tendon almost, right? However, I remember doing in my gross anatomy lab, the woman that we did, it was very short and flat. So the surgeon was saying that in less than 4% of people who choose to do a hamstring graft for reconstruction, that semitendinosis is actually not long enough. And in which case they will braid in um, a cadaver allograft to wow. reinforce it. Yes. Wicked cool. Totally geeking out right now. So um, perhaps this cadaver that I did was one of the 4% that had a very short semi-tendinosis, but um, netters, it looks quite round. So um, 191, right? For flatter tendons, we typically use 77 connective tissue. So in this case, I used both because why not, right? Like what's What's that going to hurt? So torn and broken, right? In the semi, so it's it's a two two part deal. Part of it is the hamstring harvest that you are torn and broken, right? That's where they harvest it, and the other part is the absolute um, surgical process of reinserting that new um, graft into the bone. Well, and so then you have um, um, the two thirty eight. 238, which is articular bone and bone marrow, right? Bone marrow, that was yeah. the word I was looking for. Yeah. And not, not so much periosteum. No. It's it's bone marrow and the, the cancellous and, and... Cortical. And cortical bone, the 59 and 39. And I don't know which one is which, but... But no, I... You I'm, always run them together, so who cares? Yeah. And then probably cartilage because he had to put the screw through the cartilage that's in the femoral cap. Yeah. And the, the, the text message we had about 124 for both the harvest site and yes. the implant. Totally. That was so cool. Yeah. So that's the easy part, I guess, right, of surgery when you're thinking about mechanical properties of what is occurring, but there's so much more to surgery than just what they have orthopedically reinstalled, right? We're um, 19 and 45, remove the anesthetic. That's a huge one um, that I think we ran pretty quickly in the protocols. Most of the post-ops almost always start with that after 18, stop the bleeding. It's in the beginning. Or it's on day two. It really depends on, you kind of want them a little stoned a little knocked out for 24 hours. It just, I leave the anesthesia there. It's like, no, you sleep, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to process anything. Well, and then the other thing with that patient was the nerve. Yes. Because the nerve block didn't work. Yes, so there were two nerve blocks um, administered preoperatively. Um, one was, I believe it's called an adductor canal. Um, they go up really high through the groin and um, then they did a popliteal um, uh, fossa nerve block. So it was post they were trying posterior to femoral nerve and they missed. Right. Because it didn't work. Right. Oops. So um it was yeah. So there was there was that there was waking up with pain right right away post operatively. So it's like like you said, do you really want to process the anesthetic? No, you go nine night and then that'll work its magic after on day two. 
So yeah, so many things to think of. And this patient was able to get FSM on her, um, let's see, it was less than two hours upon closing. Yay. So I will give everybody like a weekly update as we go. So the um, first visit will be tomorrow to see the surgeon and I'll update you guys next Wednesday. On What's how the bruising? Um, nothing that we can see at all. No bruising. No bruising. That's the so, part where I love to see the surgeon's face when they look at the knee. Yes. And there's no bruising and no swelling? Um, the foot and malleoli are a little swollen right now, but um, patient is on um, partial weight bearing. So that's to be expected. Everything's gonna settle in that, in that foot. Wait, wait, wait. You sit her in a chair, you put her foot up and you run 40 and 50 with 13 and polarize it probably from the neck to her toes. Okay. While watching a movie. Run it for about an hour and the swelling will go away. Okay. And then just sort of massage the leg up. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's just a busy, the lymphatics are just a busy place after surgery. So much to process and filter and do. Well, it would be really fun to have the swelling gone too. Yes. Oh, when she sees the surgeon, I just love sandbagging surgeons. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So for all the practitioners listening, again, just to reiterate, the mode bank is there for you to tweak, right? It's not like the feelings are going to get hurt if you take out something or add something in. This is all customizable for a reason. Here's both sides. You're supposed to do that stuff. Yeah. And you've given so many fantastic starting points for everybody. And the that's, the, that's the way the core has changed. It's the challenge that I have, I think, is that the core is so much and it's so overwhelming. And I don't know how to make it not overwhelming that it's, they don't, they just get scared. It's like trying to speak a foreign language and the first time you go to the language lab and then you actually have to record your voice saying, I'd like bacon and eggs for breakfast, please. Right. In a foreign language, it's like, what? How do I do that? So, but, but you guys, don't, do it. I believe in you. Yeah. I, I believe in you. You can do this. Yes. And then you're like, oh, okay. I yeah. can. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think practitioners though are coming to the core hungry, not skeptical. That's just what I've seen in the past decade anyways. Mm -hmm. um, people wanna know how their colleague did that to their case or they're coming as, as maybe old skeptics going, I didn't believe in this, but somebody treated me and I need to know how to do that. How they do that. How's right. that work? right. And they're at the very beginning, thanks. I do warn them what's coming the whole fire hose thing yeah. <laughs> and they they're they're at that point they are skeptical it's like no i can do this so we start on wednesday and by saturday they're just glazed over like, you guys just need to relax and enjoy this because you're not going to remember anything i say between now and sunday night at six o'clock it's just it'll be fine <laughs> that's why you have 600 slides to look back on next week or on the airplane going home yeah or, well, like Roger Billica's neurotransmitter workshop. Oh, it's amazing. I read those, I reread those slides two, three times a year. Yeah. Just, just go through the slides. Dopamine, right. Okay, got it. Because dopamine's a hard one for me. It's like, yeah. And then, yeah. It's like, because it's complicated. Right. And I have to tell you, Minette came up with the word. Oh. The Physical medicine and rehab course. Ooh. Thank you, Manette. Physical medicine and rehab. Yes. That's what it is. It's not a sports course. It's not a sports course. It I thought it was going to be a sports course and it used to be. I think the first year it was very sporty. Mm -hmm. And like anything, it morphs and grows and adapts. <laughs> you yeah. have to rethink it. And well, and you have to take the stuff that you learned in the core and yeah. learn how to think about it in a physical medicine and rehab application. Right. So I started out in physical medicine and rehab. So I take all that, all the stuff you teach in the sports course, I already do 
I just don't have time to teach it. Yeah. And you've got two, two or three days. How long is the sports course now? Three days. It, it's two. And then we have the sports advanced, which is the add on to it. Um, so, so you have two days to take what I do in maybe five, six slides. Yes. Two days to really dissect it and play with it. Yeah. And what's the difference between that and pain and injury module? Uh, at the pain and the Kevin says, what's the difference between the physical, physical medicine, medicine rehab, rehab course and the pain and injury course? So the pain and injury module is just the first third half of the comprehensive core. It's all the pain and injury stuff and then concussion and vestibular. So there's right. three days for people that only do physical medicine. So if you're a physical therapist and you're not treating stroke patients, you don't really need the neurovisceral module. Right. So neurovisceral module is more for um, uh, medical pe people with a broader scope, MDs, yeah. DOs, naturopaths, even chiropractors that are interested in treating the brain, OTs that treat brain injuries and strokes, um, and just and even psychologists and psychiatrists. Right. So the, the neuro section, I mean, I could give David Musnick two days to do the visceral and then just do neuro over three days and make that, but there's only so many courses you can put on the website. Yeah. Like there's, it's confusing enough as it is already. So, yes. So and I think too, to build on what Kevin was saying, I'm so practicum dense too. So I think with the pain and injury, lots of lecture, lots of diving into conditions and how to apply the frequencies with that. And then it's at what, whatever we're calling it now, physical medicine and rehab or old sports course, it was more um, like biomechanics, breaking down different assessment tips and tricks, like more of a practical um, application, I guess, for that stuff. I, I could go with that. That works. I don't know. And I think, you know, like the sports advance, we did all the, um, the balance work, the strength work, like that was all the stuff that we build up on, but it is so necessary for everybody to learn how to stand on a balance pad, eyes open, eyes closed, override the nervous system, watch them stand like a tree, turn it off, watch them fall over like a leaf. I mean, that's stuff that. It's so cool. It is so cool. Yeah. So, um, all right. Physical medicine and rehab. And then combining this, this patient I had with the chemical injury, her esophagus is really messed up and scarred, right? From yeah. that. And so her posture is kind of forward. So the thing we did the second day was with sticky pads right and treated the esophagus for scarring the vagus nerve wraps around the esophagus and runs in between the esophagus and the bronchi right so scarring in the vagus so it wouldn't do any good to treat scarring in the esophagus because your cerebellum isn't going to let you stretch if the vagus is still scarred to the esophagus and the bronchi right so we treated scarring it's this this way of thinking right so scarring in the esophagus scarring yeah. in the bronchi scarring in the vagus and the whole alkalinity in the esophagus but the thing that was time dependent and made her totally stoned was simply torn and broken in the esophagus wow. so after we did that and she could flex forward and then to get her to stand to and she can only be treated sitting so she's treated sitting she has a trach she's treated sitting and i said so i want you to find your lower trap took 20 minutes the 81 and 84 81 and 92 and 40 and 89 because the hippocampus had an opinion about sitting straight up if everything in here was scarred right 
wiped the midbrain, yeah. on the cerebellum, and then actually got her to be able to tuck her chin and activate the upper thoracic paraspinals and right. the lower trap. And at the end of that, she was exhausted. Yeah. It's just like, okay. I on. love doing that. I had, I had a patient this week and he says, I spend four minutes doing exercises with you and I am more tired than when I spend an hour and a half with my trainer. Yeah. And I said, yes, because you're wrong strong. And men especially hate when I call them wrong strong. Like, no, I am strong. I can deadlift and I can squat. And I said, yes, but can you actually retract your shoulder blade without using your upper trap? No. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> and, and can you do proper form with a lap pull down with 40 pounds? I don't care if you can do it with 100. Not if you're using your abs and your quads and your toes. And momentum and yeah. King, it's like, no, wrong strong. That's a good, yes. that's a good word. I like yeah. that. Well, you know, it just kind of stifles everything. But I think again, going back to just re-educating not just practitioners, but we're re-educating patients all the time, right? With what we do, because we boil it down to it's an art and a science, what, what we do, you know, it, it's such a intricate balance of the two worlds when you're even just teaching a patient how to feel frequency, right? Because you have, it's one thing to deal with skeptical practitioners, but we have, well, not so much anymore skeptical patients. I think, you know, after a certain amount of time practicing with FSM, you get a reputation, the patients find you, um, and they're not skeptical. They're like, I need whatever it is that you do. I don't get what you do, but I need whatever it is that you're, you're doing. I actually had a skeptical patient this week. Really? She's had, she had um, lumpectomy and 14 lymph nodes, 12 positive, no lymphedema in the left arm. The surgeon was a genius, but then she had radiation and nobody and so her pain level has been, to, been between a five and a seven for 14 years and so she she almost didn't want to see me she's here for another reason and she said well i'll just i'll take two sessions it's like okay so i did a sensory exam and had to explain to her so you could see the tattoo marks on her chest where they had targeted the radiation mm -hmm. And I said, well, she's hyper aesthetic, not just on the left where they did the lumpectomy. And there's all the scar tissue from that. And there wasn't that much. It was a great, it was a good surgeon. Um, but the intercostal nerves, so from T3 to T7, she was hyper aesthetic in the front and the back on the left, but no, T4 to T7 or eight on the left. But from T3 to T6 or seven on the right, she was hyperesthetic front and back. And she said, well, cause the pain that bothered her was on the left under her armpit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she started out with her pain at a four or five but she's had it for since 2007. So she's like used to it. Right. So I finished and her range of motion instead of stopping at 170 went to up over her head and she said oh that is better and then well her pain was a two but there's this still this spot yeah but and your pain's a two and your shoulder range of motion is better and well why did my right side be hyper it's like remember the radiation goes this way right right so she, well, what's that deep pain? It's like, well, it's probably the bone, but it could be your lungs. It could be your bronchi. It could be, could, we'll find out on Thursday. But she, it was almost like she was so used to it that when it improved, she didn't want to believe it. Right. And it's like, okay, fine. I'm happy that you can lift your arm. That's good. Yes. And that's a great point. So many times we're caught up on that pain scale going down. And you're right. Sometimes it's not the pain that goes down. 
because they have a hard time believing right that it that it improved so you go that's why you do an assessment before and an assessment after so that you could you you have one or the other to back each other up right so you're like well your arm like I said your range of motion improved oh yeah that's right and it didn't hurt when you did that oh yeah that's right and yeah. then I'm also the only practitioner who's ever asked her if she's been molested abused or raped oh and she was mm -hmm. and so while we were doing the treatment one of the four or five machines that was on her was concussion in Vegas. Yeah. I, she, I don't have her for two and a half hours, so I don't, I'm not going to run the PTSD protocol, but I might do that when she comes back tomorrow. Right. And, but concussion in Vegas should get it and just spend, have one machine that just does 40 and 89 and see if you can get her head around at, out of that whole anxiety, trauma loop right. that people get into. Right. So we have tools that allow us to integrate. I can do the physical medicine stuff, but the last part of the pain and injury and the last part of the um, neurovisceral and, and the last part of the comprehensive is emotions. Emotions don't come from space. They come right. from the amygdala, the hippocampus, the thalamus, and they're layered. Yes. Patients that feel guilty out a patient that just felt guilty because he'd done something stupid that injured himself. Mm. Like, well, guilt is anger turned inwards. So mm -hmm. I treat him for anger and resentment. Right. And then grief and then restoring joy. Right. So on her, the next time it's anger, resentment, hurt feelings. I mean, you, because you can, if you have multiple machines, you can think your way through it. I was just going to say that I, um, I was the biggest skeptic of the emotional frequencies. And I say this all the time. I spent the first two years never using them because it didn't make sense until I did a case study with a professional hockey player who was yeah. afraid to move his leg. And it wasn't the same, like 40 and 89, afraid to move it. It was the fear of losing his job if this injury didn't get better. Right. And, you know, so many people think the like athletes fear professional, even kids is, is stupid and they minimize it, but this is their world, yeah. you know? So the pressure that they're feeling to get better and, they'll impose it on you as the therapist or the practitioner. You have to get me better. I've, I've had that finger in my face so many times, this better work. I better be in the lineup tomorrow. I'm like, okay. Okay, fine. So this is again, when you need multiple machines and have, you know, yes, concussion, sometimes there'll be just concussion in Vegas on, on a custom care in the background. And I've developed, I've customized some emotional ones that I use with athletes, like anger and fear. And because they are reliving all of this motor vehicle accident, um, patients are the same. There's terror, there's anger, there's all those things. And it doesn't hurt to just throw it in on the background while you're doing all your physical stuff. It has to be treated anyways. Well, and the emotional relax and balance that's in the, in the custom care needs yeah. to be, they, I, you change the order from what, what I knew 20 years ago when we first developed it, change the order mm -hmm. and change the amount of time. And some of the frequencies are just not necessary. Sure. Like, it's just not a thing for that patient, but the basics, fear, anger, resentment, grief, you always do last and finish with restoring joy. And you're doing that while you're running a whole separate unit that's just running 40 and 89 the whole time. Right. Right. Just quiet the midbrain. It's like, tell the amygdala and the hippocampus to chill out. Yeah. It's Give really it a blankie and a pillow. It go night night now. Yeah. Go yeah. sleep. It'll yeah. be fine. When you wake up, it'll be better. I yeah. promise. <laughs> it's always better after a nap come on this is true oh, okay a couple Maddie, questions maddie's has fun i have two patients diagnosed with fibromyalgia but after your advice last week i now realize they both have ehlers danlos yay oh. maddie. <laughs> and 40 and 10 124 77 both had improved sleep post-treatment they're usually sleeping two to three hours maybe a night so yay for that the difficult part for me is they had Oh no, 
been diagnosed by MDs as having fibro, RSD, et cetera, felt uneasy going against the doctor's diagnosis, but now I know better, so thank you. Looking <laughs> forward to upcoming sessions in a condition that is otherwise untreatable. That would be our thing. So thank you, Maddie, for doing it. This is so cool. Hey, Maddie, the FSM, the PDI devices, the custom care and precision care, thanks to David Suzuki's persistence, stubbornness, determination. Maybe he should get the Ruth Johnson Award too. Maybe. If we look at all these adjectives you just said. Yes. The, the custom care and the precision care have been approved by the TGA. So I will be going to Australia next year. We can don't I come? Yet. You can come. It's fun. It it's, takes three days to get over the jet lag, even for you. <laughs> but um, going there is actually easier than coming back. Uh -huh. Just warning you. And I'm not sure where we're going to do it. That'll be up to Diana Cross. It's either going to be on the Gold Coast or down in Sydney. Yes. But, um, Gold Coast is more casual. It's more fun. So I'm coming, Maddie. Yes. yes. Kevin sent that email out to everybody. So that's fantastic news. Um, and Canada's next. Right yes. on the heels. They're, yeah. The applications. We met the criteria two weeks ago and submitted to the TGA and Health Canada an amazing that the TGA came back so fast and came back before Canada. But huh. David's on top of it and we've met the criteria for Canada. So we'll be able to ship into Canada anytime. Oh, that's great news. I'm so Yay. Yay. We are international. Um, Leaf made a great point here. Um, thanks for reiterating about the emotions. Try constitutional um, numbers too. Yes, constitutional factors are, you, you talk about it mostly in the advance, right? That hasn't crept its way into the core yet. Can't. Yeah. I mean, there's just too much. Too the much. Six point thirty-eight. The um, healing group was most familiar with Harry and the constitutional frequencies, and their concern was that the constitutional frequencies might work the way homeopathy does. So mm -hmm. if the gene gene is present but not active, and you run the frequency they were afraid maybe it would turn them on, turn the gene on. So it's present, but off. You run the frequency for that and it turns it on. So it proves the remedy is what they talk about it in homeopathy. So George is the one that created 6.8 and 38. It seems to turn all of them off. It just takes longer. Right. So it's more generic and it tends to be grounding mm -hmm. in addition. So if you're an acupuncturist and you're taking pulses, you can do that. It took me probably 10 years to get comfortable with the specific um, constitutional frequencies. LEAF has the um, advantage of having been raised around Harry. So mm -hmm. he knows the difference between um, the soric and uh, phosphoric and syphilitic and psychotic, those particular um, constitutional factors. Right, right. So I can keep some of them straight in my head and they work. The thing is you have to do them with a the precision care because you have to have your hands on the patient someplace mm -hmm. feel for softening. And when it's done, it's done and you switch it off. Right. So that's why they're in the advanced. And what I found this year was that I need three days for the advance because there's so much more material right. and I don't get to the constitutional frequencies in time to spend enough time on them. Right, right. So Roger Billica has a really good flow chart about when to choose what. Right. That's in the resource page. Right. But yeah. So thank you, Leif. Thanks, Leif. So um, Dana, diastasis. So I have to say that my talk on diastasis this year at the advance was my favorite talk I've ever given in my entire life. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to jump on this one really quick first. Sure. I found a few studies that have the treatment commence near on the day of delivery. What is the outlook for diastasis four years plus? Okay. It's fantastic. You're, you're hardly ever going to see somebody in your clinic with diastasis the day or two after they deliver. You are going to see them a decade after they've given birth and can't figure out why their low back pain hasn't resolved because their core 
was stretched and deflated. So the big thing with diastasis, it's not a muscular imbalance. The linea alba, the really thin connective tissue that is in between the rectus abdominis stretched, it tore and broke. And because it's not a um, elastic um, connective tissue, it's plastic. So it's non-contractile. So it's not like a muscle that it can just go back. So it's stretched. So part of it, after seeing somebody after four years, even after seeing somebody after a year is scarring in the fascia, scarring in the connective tissue because it stretched and it stuck that way. What were you going to say? And the nerve. And the nerve. Because the muscles don't fire because it's broken and because the nerves are scarred. Right. So once you get rid of the scarring, 81 is going to be your friend. This is that floof. So that linea alba is non-contractile. So the rectus abdominis, once it has freedom, once the, those um, scarred properties are broken up, once it has freedom and permission, 1489, to be able to contract, it's going to be scared because it was stretched and traumatized. So once you've broken down the scarring, you have to send 81 to the area. So 81 and 396, 81 and 77, 81 and your sarcomere. Yeah. So the, the other thing, the other diastasis recti talk that was given in 12 or 11, 12, 13, someplace, um, her patient came in and just sat in a chair in the clinic and ran 81 and 142 for three hours, twice a week. She went from a size 16 to a size 12 without losing any weight. That's crazy. It's but I believe it because yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the biggest one. But again, in my world, you have to start exercising. So one of the most important first steps with diastasis, and you can Google this on the internet is you take a large towel and you put it underneath their low back. And on the left side, you take your right hand and pull it across. And then your left hand, you grab the right side and you brace the low back. So you're smushing it because once those muscles want to fire, they'll dome. So if you bridge them together, if you force the tissue together while you're learning proper techniques about how to brace and get the transverse abdominis to get that corset action first, then everything else will go. So you go in steps with the rehab, but yeah, you're, you're hardly ever going to see somebody the first year postpartum because the diastasis blows apart on that first pregnancy. People are not going to seek rehab until all their pregnancies are done and they have toddlers and they have back pain because they're picking up these toddlers and they have no support in the front. Do people do surgical repairs for diastasis? They can. So I myself had a whole hand. I had a six centimeter split after my third child. I could feel my spleen. I think <laughs> like, I was like, what is that? So they all said it was surgical. And I said, just give me some time. <laughs> so I still have like a one centimeter split, but I have no back pain. So like you can go in and sew it, but who cares? Because everything else is strong. It's just, it just looks weird. So, um, but they, they do do it in extreme cases, but they thankfully want people to see rehab a go first before they go in there. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, that's a great talk. Yeah. I loved it. Sorry. <laughs> um, love that we can fix things that are unfixable. Yeah. It's like, I know I have to live with it. Uh, no. Right. Not so 80 much. and 81 seems to be in the past couple of years, like the man on, on the a channel, like, I don't know, people are afraid of it. Just like they're afraid of 40, but those are, I think are, are two such pivotal um, a channel yeah. frequencies, turn it up, turn it down. Yeah. And it's just like, what do you want to do? Right. Yeah. Um, Minette, well, is, what happens? right. Minette's question. Um, is it possible to do, um, zero, zero frequency with our custom care? No. So no, the software just won't allow it. The, it just can't be done. So you just put in 0.1. So you put 0 0.1. Right. And just one tenth, And it's just enough to move current. So it's, it's not a drama on the precision care. 
you can put a zero zero. It doesn't mind. Right. But the custom care because of the way everything on it is and was built, you just have to put in 0 0.1. So if you look at the um, flu respiratory protocol, the first section where I ran each of the flu viruses, it, it's just the virus with 0.1 as a tissue locator. So that's like, that's as close as you can get to zero, zero. And right. Lee reminds us that the constitutional frequencies are in Harry's books. That, oh. And I think it's, Leaf, do you remember which book it's in? One of them is poems and one of them, yeah. Oh, grounding mat in a better chair, should we remove it when using FSM? No, uh-uh. Oh. Extra electrons have never hurt. I mean, a grounding mat is fine. It won't do what FSM does, but it's not gonna hurt what you do with FSM. Doesn't interfere with it, right? I think so. No, it's like people ask, well, can I use my cell phone? Yeah, we treat athletes. They're on the phone, they're watching movies. You treat somebody for five hours. I used to tell my athletes when they came to see me that our devices, I might've started this rumor because I wanted them to like just shut off and pay attention. So I used to say that our, our devices um, interfered with cell phone usage. <laughs> uh, Kevin says it's probably the process of healing, I think, Leaf. And then the, uh, the other one is inner peace through the process of knowing. And I'm not sure which one has the constitutional frequencies. So I think those are Harry Van Gelder's books. Okay. Those are Van Gelder's books. Process oh. of knowing or the process of healing. Yeah, I know, but which one has the <laughs> thank you, Lee. So, uh, that's adorable. That's great. Do we have any more questions before we I think we did a lot of answering everything? Oh, um, somebody had asked me on Instagram about accessing the advanced, um, if you didn't go to the advanced, and I'm sure it's still the same, you can go on the website and you can um, get yeah, this. Is the is video it? ready yet? No, David hasn't finished um, perfecting the video yet. So okay. uh, it's about time to harass David about doing that. He tends to it's got to be perfect. Yeah. It's like sometimes, have you ever heard that phrase? Perfect is the enemy of finished. No. Perfect is the enemy of done or perfect is the enemy of, so like sometimes it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll make it perfect next time or later, but. Right. right just, just get it. Just get it done. And Seth Godin says you got to ship your product. What is it? Gotta ship your product. Just gotta ship it. Ship the product. Just get it done. Yes, get it out the door. Um, that's almost it for today. Wow. Happy Ruth Johnston Award. Oh, I again, like I just can't like I can't wrap my little brain around that. But I mean well, next, next year. I gotta see if I can figure out a way to get David Suzuki to come. He's always so busy. He can so come. Would be because I had another recipient in mind. So I might, so one year I did give two of them. Um, Diana Cross and Jim Oshman got it. At the oh, same that's time. right. They were both, they were both there. And so. Um, I think it would be so great for practitioners to see David Suzuki, the man, the wizard behind the, <laughs> the, the cape or behind the curtain, because he is we have so much gratitude for, like you said, the tenacity and just the quality that he has for these devices are so important. And it's, and we are his only class two device. His company is, does over the counter uh, aesthetics devices. He does, his primary right. market is devices and um, consumables for aestheticians, for skincare folks. Mm -hmm. And um, we are his only class two device. So for him, and we're maybe 20% of his total company output. Right. So for him to do what he's done, it's taken him five years of messing around and precision distributing actually contributed. It's like, David, we, were, we are serious about this. 
here's some money to hire somebody whose job it is to do this. Right. And so he took that money plus his own money and he hired two people whose only job is regulatory to get the CE mark and health and this MD SAP. It's a whole new quality system. And he, Microcurrent Technologies is one of seven companies in the country. And this, these are companies like Medtronics and the big implantable guys. There's seven companies in the country and we're one of them. Wow. And people want to know why the Chinese knockoffs are $500 less. And it's like, okay, if, if you, just so you know, if you work in a medical facility, you have to have ISO 13485 and 16601, and that device will never have them. Right. Devices, there's now three knockoffs. Right. And no offense to the people that use them. They're good, but no, no. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> and I don't, I don't care. It's like, I'll work with anybody that uses any device that meets the standards. Right. You know, has two channels and three digits. digits and yeah. It's on you. Um, to figure out how to use it because I don't play with those. So that's good. Right. So we'll see. Okay, now it's 502. Now we're on making time. <sighs> well, <laughs> thank you. Thanks everybody for coming. As always, we will um, see you next week. Keep the questions coming in. Those Keep are always fun. Those are, yeah, those are great. And since we'll have they're piling up now because we keep going down the windy roads that we go down. So you have a list. I have a list. You should, if you send me the list, I can help you by maybe putting little stair steps down the rabbit holes. So we have to answer a question before we can. That's a great idea. We can collaborate the list. I like the list. I love that. All right. Okay. We're going to keep going with our blossoming and rethinking and blooming theme all month long, though. Blooming, blossoming. That's a good thing. Those are good okay. words. All right, everybody. Bye. Take care. We'll see you next week. See you next week. The Frequency Specific Microcurrent Podcast has been produced by Frequency Specific Seminars for entertainment, educational, and information purposes only. The information and opinion provided in the podcast are not medical advice, do not create any type of doctor-patient relationship, and unless expressly stated, do not reflect the opinions of its affiliates, subsidiaries, or sponsors, or the hosts, or any of the podcast guests or affiliated professional organizations. No person should act or refrain from acting on the basis of the content provided in any podcast without first seeking appropriate medical advice and counseling. No information provided in any podcast should be used as a substitute for personalized medical advice and counseling. FSS expressly disclaims any and all liability relating to any actions taken or not taken based on or any contents of this podcast.